So basically a bit of ground rules, uh, since it is a three way conversation, um, all questions are meant for both of you, there are some specific ones which I will point out, otherwise you can jump in at, I mean and, and uh, intervene and speak and then I will not try and play a classic interviewer's role, I will keep nudging the two sisters and it is really a pleasure and an honour that you, you two are coming together for the very first time yeah, to give true. an interview, which is uh, <laughs> which is a kind of a coup, and uh, I'm very very well, grateful. We congratulate to you. you for it because I it, know. it uh, didn't no, strike no, us, <laughs> but I don't think anyone has even approached us. Yeah, saying the no, I, mean, I was just telling her that in 2008 I wanted to do this, and I remember calling her and she was busy, uh, and uh, I ended up doing Gauri and her sister. This was for Outlook and it was a print interview, it was not a grand big interview like this. So the, it was on my mind for a decade now, hmm. so I am very very happy that it is finally happening. And I will keep the conversation bilingual because you are, both of you are also familiar with Kannada, so it will be nice to bring in a bit of Kannada as well as we go along. And uh, I want to make one confession, which is I am a great admirer of you. Uh, the institution builder and the actor and I am an unabashed fan of her <laughs> I mean I was just telling her a little, I let her in on a little secret mm -hmm. as to how I had entered her name when somebody asked me in school who my favourite actress was <laughs> and I would probably just seen one song of hers. So, <laughs> so it is a great moment personally for me and professionally of course it is a great coming together. So this is the by and large the ground rules. So I just shoot the first question, both of you grew up in Mumbai and that is at least the early part of your life and uh, do you think your lives would have been different had you continued to live in Mumbai? In the sense what I am essentially trying to get at is does a city change a woman's life? Mm -hmm. Cities have impacts on people. But, and, and if it is more cosmopolitan, more open, more liberal, does that change a woman's life? And uh, does it also change your attitude to life if you live in a bigger city like Mumbai? So you came into Bangalore when Bangalore was not today's Bangalore. So it was, it was almost a kind of glorified village, a glorified town perhaps, very circumscribed. So how would you sort of look back at Mumbai? Well, uh, growing up, I, both of us are incidentally born in Delhi. Okay. And uh, brought, brought up in Bombay. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, that, a bit of personal history would be welcome, you know, because. <laughs> so we're born in Delhi. I, I'm six years older than her. So it's almost like a generation gap. When I went to Bombay, I was 10. Okay. But uh, she was still four years old. So they are completely different takes on Bombay. Okay. And. Uh, Similarly, moving to Bangalore also, I moved first and uh, she moved later. So I think her take on Bangalore would be different. Right. I was uh, younger when I moved into Bangalore. So from the age of 10 to 23 till I got married, I was in Bombay. So you can say the formative years were really there. There in Bombay. And uh, Bombay being the melting pot that it has always been. Historically it has been, it is even today. Right. For us children brought up in a government colony, uh, a fairly cosmopolitan government colony. Was it a cantonment by any chance? No, no, no. no. It Delhi. Wasn't a canton. Okay. Delhi, right. Netaji Nagar. Yes. So we had a, I had a Bengali best friend and we had Sindhis living opposite us. So we were not, we didn't even know what community we belonged to. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we came to Bombay, we were made to realize that uh, uh, the Maharashtrians used to call us South Indians and the South Indians used to call us Hindi Kara. Despite you being a Maharashtrian? 
Of sorts, you of see, sorts. of okay. sorts <laughs> again, That's because uh, parents did not thrust Marathi on us. Okay. We were speak. We even today in moments of crisis, we break into Hindi. Okay. And so not Marathi. Very casually, yeah. Hindi happens, mm -hmm. Gujarati happens, Marathi also happens, okay. but we've inherited two kinds of Marathi, okay. because one is a 400-year-old Marathi from my father's side. And the other is the more refined Marathi from my mother's side, okay. you know. Okay. Uh, so my father's family was a family that settled down in Karnataka, maybe during the Peshwa rule. Okay. Right. right. And, uh, and which part so of Karnataka? Uh, Chintamani. Chintamani. That's Kola. Yeah. Okay. So our Sonta Uru is Chintamani. Chintamani. <laughs> okay, lovely. <laughs> But right. uh, you know, there's there's all this, and then born in Delhi and brought up in Bombay, so yeah, those are. The I remember being put in SIES school, okay. and uh, we were the only North Indians. We didn't know Tamil, we didn't know Marathi, so we were North Indians, and oh, the whole school used to call us Hindi Kara, Hindi Kara. And this was sixties, late nineteen. Seventies, yeah, late sixties. Late sixties. Sixty-six, nineteen sixty-six. Balasaheb was on the rise, and not yet. I not wouldn't yet. Rem even remember yeah. politics okay. at the age of ten. No, but the politics of language surely hit us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nineteen sixty-six. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ratna okay. also does. Ratna, that's the, that team, Nasir yeah. and Ratna, both of them. Uncompromised good theatre they do. Oh, lovely. And yeah. all the others, I will say. Everybody else does tokenism, uses theatre as a crutch, uses it for the respectability that it brings them, and uh, cheats the diaspora. Right. So yeah. they go out of India and they go and do shows all over America and all people buy tickets because these are the actors they see in popular movies. Unfortunately, the world thinks this is the theatre India is capable of. And that's not true because we have some very fine theatre performances, very fine theatre actors who are doing cutting edge work right. and capable of much more. Much more, right. So you were you were you said you were not good at studies and therefore you went into theatre. So let's come back to yeah, I know, routine. Digress, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, so I was doing theatre in college. Both Paresh and me actually were given scholarships and our fees were waived because we were acting in the college plays. Okay. That's how the colleges looked at us. We were getting all these best actor awards and winning festivals and young colleges used to encourage extracurricular activities because that kind of immediately gave them a, a personality in the mm. scenario of right. Xavier's and Sydenham and such colleges. I was also doing a lot of group dancing, which meant Bhangra, doing mono acting. All this is part of the college acting uh, uh, basket that mm. got the college points at points, youth festivals. Right. Then there was television. Television had just it come. Just that comment, right. Yeah. Just come, black and white television. Right. So um, decently talented, good looking girl the chances of her ha getting a role in television were more, <laughs> which was me. It was right. <laughs> so, <laughs> and also mm. spoke Hindi well. Mm. Yes, it was more dominant by Hindi, mm. dominated. It was a single channel uh, television. So you started with a Gujarati serial? I started Haji with Arti a, yeah. Right. Gujarati, because we were living in Santa Cruz and all our neighbours were Gujaratis, we learnt Gujarati. All our friends were Gujaratis. So languages were coming at us like this and we were making capital out of it. So I was acting in Marathi plays, Gujarati plays, Hindi plays. I did not know Kannada but I had done a Kannada play. Okay, right. Yeah. Right. So your formal introduction to Kannada happened which through Shankar Nag, is it? Through or? bad words. Bhaigulu. Nam tande chinta mani kade oro. Nam tande best friend, government colony Liddaga Delhi nali. Pakkad mane auro, baage palli na auro. Aingar, PRR aingar atta. Mahaudu. You ribro, they would give, in the ratri summer ali na au, garden al malkota idwala. From this side, my father would shout out to his friend on that side. You know, engi diyo, ondh bai, ondh ishtu bai gulo, illi nda ali ali, inta magne anta magne anta kariyo du. So we children had learned all the e magne, a magne bad words. Right, right. Lovely. <laughs> so th actually that was the Kannada that we knew for a very long, very long time. time right. yeah. And then my father had this great thing of anybody who did not have a job would come to our house, my father would fix him up somewhere. He was in the government, so he would get them a job. He was like an employment exchange. Antadrali, Sumar Jana Bengaluru in the Bandbartha Idru Nammanege. Nammane Vantara Transit Home. Transit Home, right. right. Hangagi Namta Namta Ayik Kannada Bartha Irlila. Okay. Ima go hutti to avaga. Nam tai banege bai bandi brge heledro. Na nor kothi ni ni manna na nge Canada er kodu bekuni wo. Because when my mother used to come to Bangalore summer holidays al banda ga. I mane oru yena dr secret matar bekandre Canada dal matar taydro. Nam tai gar tha akta er lella. Hanga ge when my mother was learning Canada, the first language that this child learned was Canada. She picked it up naturally. So, what is your the irony of it? <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your take on Mumbai? I mean, what was your routine like? How did? What do you remember yes. of Mumbai? So, uh, oh, I remember a lot. I mean, because my memory begins from Delhi. Strangely, okay. though I was three, I have memories of that garden in front of the house, the vegetable garden at the back. You know, some memories in flashes, but it's there. And um, yeah. Childhood friends learning, speaking Gujarati, right. play while playing, it was Gujarati all the way. 
and I also remember it being very cosmopolitan. Hmm. So someone from UP, someone from Gujarat, someone from wherever. And these are very close friends even today. Hmm. You know, hmm. those have been long lasting influences. Yeah. And uh, even through school, though not many of my school friends are in touch. I have no, uh, I'm not in touch with any of them. But it is these influences were having grown up with people, you know, the neighbors. Right. Those people are still in touch. Yeah. And uh, apart from that, uh, yeah, in college, mm -hmm. I was doing theatre. Okay. Uh, and despite being good in studies. Now, <laughs> now that, that's a myth, okay? That's a complete myth. Because I think I was struggling with maths. In the third standard, I failed maths. Okay. And then I was promoted with grace marks. Yeah. And that story repeated in the sixth standard and then I was given tuitions right. and then yeah, I really worked at it and I had a wonderful tuition teacher who used right. to say maths is 99% common sense and 1% method and she just took the fear out fear of me. Out of right. And that year I got 100 on 100, so very thrilled. So then the whole thing changed. It, it changed. Yeah, right. okay. But um, I, I, I think my, I didn't even know that I was inclined towards the arts. Mm. I wish I did because I wouldn't have suffered five years of commerce. Okay. Because so you now went when into I look, and not science, yeah, okay, right. and when I look back, my life has had nothing to do with okay. commerce in that right. sense. You know, I've not been able to use it really. Mm. Um, yeah, but one did it, and then through the college years, one was doing theatre in English, Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati. And I began with amateur theatre in Marathi and it was Shankar's first uh, directorial venture, venture right. uh, in Marathi right. uh, which was a play called Fatang okay. and that was my first Marathi play okay. and then uh, yeah of course and it, you were we, the lead went, actress we worked in, in Ipta, both of us okay, worked in Ipta. Yeah. And um, uh, we happened to play mother and daughter okay, in a play called um, Akhri Sawal. Mm -hmm. That was after, much later, much later, much later, much later of course. Um, I joined Ipta after when I was 16. 16, yes. Yeah, right. okay. so she was still in the cradle, she was still 10. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why I said these experiences are like. Yeah. They are spread apart because of the sheer age difference between right. us. So when I became 17 or so, that was when 16, 17 was when I came into IPTA and uh, I was doing uh, Akhri Sawal. That time uh, Shabana's mother, Shaukat Apa, she was playing the mother's role and it was only after she, you know, fell ill, she couldn't handle the BP with the role uh, that Aru stepped in stepped and Aru was yeah. doing the role. Between the two of you, how many languages are there? And since you see linguistic They're pretty much the same. Pretty right. much the same languages, so but she speaks uh, Tamil much better than me. I Marathi, can we count? <laughs> Marathi, Hindi, English, okay. Marathi, okay. Uh, Gujarati, Gujarati, Kannada. Kannada. These are the base Basics. languages yeah. that and, we speak and, and, and the, speak them well. Yeah, a bit of we can read and write. And you said I yeah. have Tamil and Konkani in my uh, right. vocabulary. And Konkani comes from Shankar, Shankar, Shankar side. Side, right. side, yeah. yeah right. So yeah. And, and you have any other? French. French. I've done my French. diploma in French. French. <laughs> and uh, when required, I survive, survive. with right. Konkani, with Tamil, with Telugu. So basically, there are a dozen languages playing between the two. Quite a few. Quite, quite a few. Quite a few. Yeah. I must tell you something that's very a, that's interesting. A very, yeah, yeah, please. I was, uh, like I said, I was not good at studies because I got, uh, in the second standard, I got a double promotion and I was pushed to fourth standard. Suddenly, I'm, I'm, all my friends were missing and I re very clearly remember I started telling lies mm -hmm. when I landed in fourth standard. So in school, if they said, have you got your homework? I would say, I've left it at home. At home, if my mother asked me, where's your homework? No homework, only drawing and spelling. <laughs> 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 then the teachers caught me one day because I, you can't play fool like this for too long. They put a dunce cap on my head and made me stand out. My brothers disowned me. And then from fifth standard to seventh standard, I got another double promotion. Okay. Because I moved from the higher secondary instruction of medium to the SSC. Right. Again, you're the youngest. At 10, I was in seventh standard. Seventh standard. <laughs> so super young for the class. 
And math is something that you need continuity with. Right. HCF, LCM had fallen through the floor. Oh. And you know what was going on yeah. in class? New math. Yeah. So maths has been like a huge dragon in my life. <laughs> and just a few years ago, I met this lady who is a PhD in uh, math. So I looked at her with, wow, with oh, such oh, reverence, yeah, right, PhD reverence in maths. And no, she, she was very good at physiology, remember? Yeah, so this yeah. lady, she just looked at me and said, you know, I've heard you speak many languages. Mm -hmm. Your brain is a mathematical brain. So basically, you know, we were talking languages and you were talking mathematics and uh, how we were flabbergasted by all that. But there's also this Bombay gives you a huge cosmopolitan exposure. So Marathi theatre came into our lives, which we did not have when we were in Delhi. Our parents were, the Marathi roots may have just woken right, up. Yeah. Suddenly we were being taken to see so many Marathi plays. I'm mm. so thankful for yeah. that. You Good must Marathi have had plays. Exceedingly liberal parents. And there is the yes. Navratri that happens in uh, Bombay in every street. So Pinti and me actually are half Gujarati. Yeah. <laughs> we know how to cook Gujarati yeah. food. We can speak and read and write Gujarati. I can't write. But speak and read Gujarati. We can right. sing their folk songs. But I think you're wasting your influence. Gujarati is a prime minister now. Yes. And you're wasting your influence, I should we say. We are. <laughs> <laughs> We've never played our political cards, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, you were telling me something about your routine in Mumbai. Yeah. So it was tough because one was waking up really early in the morning, but I was used to it because school trained me for that. School used to be from 7 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon, which was great because you had the rest of the day to do what you pleased and you got time to play in the evening. And when I was in college, it was I used to have to catch a bus at 6.30 in the morning, go from North Bombay to South Bombay, do my French classes, then come and back French, to North Bombay. And French, those days were still Alliance Francaise. Alliance Francaise at Dhanraj Mahal in Kolaba, which meant catching this bus to Bandra station, Bandra station catch the train to church gate, church gate if you're lucky you get the bus to Kolaba, otherwise you just walk and then do the whole thing back in reverse, yeah. come back to Parla for okay. college, attend college, attend rehearsals in college because you're doing four or five plays at any given point of time and finish with that and then go back to South Bombay because there'll be some other rehearsal yeah, happening right. there and uh, then and catching the local catching the local train yep, yep, yep. and studying on the train and getting back in the night bushed what out. Was, what was driving you to do all this? You know, who was driving you? Nobody really, but was I think it was just some generous, innate madness. So I am Luantara, so you were generous, you were on your own doing it. I can what speak was influencing as I said again. Uh, uh, for me, there was a need. I was not good in class, I was hating studies. I wanted to be a painter. Uh -huh. uh, because I couldn't cope with the studies, I wanted to be a painter. Right. And uh, every time my mother asked me if you have homework, I said, uh, yeah, I've got painting, I've got drawing and I've got spelling. So and this is a good alibi. Yeah, so when I got, I, actually when I got my SSC certificate, my mother uh, marks card or whatever that is, the results came. I happened to have got a first class. In those days, 60% was very high percentage. High. First class was yeah, great. Yeah, everybody didn't get it. It was great <laughs> getting a first class, okay? And she had distinction in physiology, I remember that. And I had <laughs> taken physiology hygiene because I wanted to take fine arts. Okay. I had taken history because I wanted to I don't to think that's a discipline anymore with kids these days, physiology. Physiology, hygiene, yeah, okay. there was a subject, yeah, there was special okay. history yeah. and I had taken languages. Something like home science, what is called home science these days? No, 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 yeah. physiology. Okay, the, the yeah, physical training. Yeah. Anatomy. Okay. Anatomy. Okay. Because even if I, I wanted to go to JJ School of Arts. Okay. And so I had given my elementary and intermediate exams, which are government drawing exams. By the time I was 12, I had both those certificates. So it was planned. I knew I don't want to have maths and physics in my mm. academic life. The earliest point I could drop that it you could take, yes. was in the right. 10th standard and 11th was SSC in those days. Right. So when I got my certificate and I was leaving for JJ School of Arts, my good m middle class mother said to me, why do you want to do painting? Do something that will stand by you. And I went, I thought arts was for idiots. 
<laughs> and science, I had not taken those subjects. I went and stood in the line in Narsimunji College and they gave me admission in commerce right. without maths as a subject. So it's completely wrong person in the wrong place. So when I saw a little uh, poster that said those interested in acting come to Hindi drama, come to room number so and so, I landed up there. And my Hindi was good, so I got picked up. And it was a beautiful space to forget everything, to you know, sublimate whatever. It is very humiliating for a child when it cannot so cope. It was basically an escape. I think it, for me, it was definitely an escape from many, many things. It was not being able to cope with the academic life that I wanted to run away from. I, I loved being in somebody else's skin. And I loved being among these people who all were getting into other people's skins. You know, that was, I think, a very huge leap. And when I landed up in Ipta, say for example, till then all our theatre experiences were annual day function, college, intercollegiate plays. But when you went to Ipta, you suddenly realised that these were grown up people like your parents. They were as old as your parents or if not older. And they had spent a lifetime in the conviction of wanting to be theatre people. There was a that was a change. Change, change to so that. So do we now, f I mean because we have spoken a lot about Mumbai, do we cut and come to the present day? So we have spoken elaborately about your routine in Mumbai as growing up girls, crisscrossing the city of Mumbai. Oh, there's so much that was happening, <laughs> happening in our lives. <laughs> there was another social life that was constantly trying to pull you away. You had friends who were party creatures, who were in, into dressing up. Yeah, my mother used to always say, I'm worried because both you girls are good looking. Right. <laughs> she used to say, I would not be so worried if you were not good looking good. girls. <laughs> but both of you are good looking. Right. <laughs> and you had so many boys who were after you in those days. There were distractions. But right. I think for us, luckily, you fell into the this theater, groove. the yeah. theater was right. this huge. It was a grounding factor in our lives. Right. You know, and. Uh, it gave meaning to everything, even even really relationships. And without with you realizing it, it's yeah. Without realizing, yeah. I mean, for, for me, those fascinating part of it. Right? Purpose. It gave a purpose. Tum karte kya ho? Hum theater karte. You know, we knew what especially we especially Ipta and ah, a yeah. purpose to the whole thing. Yeah. Right. And even though f for me it was not an escape per se. Uh, at least not in my school years, because in school also one was exposed to theatre. Mm. But uh, in college, yes, huh. it was. Because in college, I was just struggling with it and I had to finish my commerce and get my degree because our lady here had given it up <laughs> and <laughs> chucked it. So all the pressure came on me. On Say, I can't be following in her footsteps. Right. So I had to do my degree <laughs> and I had to finish <laughs> it. <laughs> So in Marathi, my mother, my mother used to say, "Tija Paula or Paul ta kun salu na kostu." Then I old kaal, edge me le kaal, it to nadi bada ni no. But uh, anyway, ad hage ay to matte. Oh, well, that's all for the good. So. Yeah. So coming back to the present, you know, I mean, your your routine doesn't look very different today from what it was say 30, 40, 50 years ago, 40 years ago at least, 40, 40 years ago, yeah. right? So Hers is still the same, she right? has a hectic schedule. But how, how does your routine go? I mean, you still run one of the finest theatres in Karna, Bangalore, Karnataka, India. India. Of course, Asia, I would yes. say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's on the world map. It's on the yeah, world yeah, map, yeah. Yes. So how does your routine pan out? No, I am in a very beautiful so space. I would like to remind you, you've also become a grandmother, so you have to tell us you have to bring that in as well. Yes, grandmothers. <laughs> grandmothers. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, no, but uh, right now I'm at a very magical point in life with the Ranga Shankara, the theatre that we all built is now 14 years old. So it's a kind of a teenage child. Right. There are lots of learnings from, uh, you can imagine just being an ordinary actor to becoming an administrator. That was a huge leap. So sometimes they say actors should not build theatres because the world loses an actor and also gets a bad administrator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so I have learned a lot as I went along and I knew from the beginning that I will need to step aside and uh, identify another person and uh, let it become professional after that. So I guess I'm in the process of weaning myself, myself from the right. project, not so much the project from me. It's like because I will always be the mother and I will always be available for Ranga Shankara. It's but like the Kipling line. You can be taken out of the jungle, but the jungle will not leave you. Yes, that absolutely. That's true, true of theatre and uh, more so Ranga Shankara. I mean, I have a biological child and I have Ranga Shankara. But I feel my biological child has grown up, can look after herself. But Ranga Shankara will always need good people to run it. Hmm. And as long as I am alive, a part of my heart will be there. We will be worried about that space. Today is a Monday and uh, there is no performance at Ranga Shankara. So I am very relaxed. Otherwise, it's Otherwise yes, a part, yeah, part of me of knows yours. that something is going on over there. At 7.30 I look at my watch and say, ah, the show has begun. Right. right. <laughs> and you are so, not there every single day like you used to be. Right? No, right. no, I, I don't go. Right. I, the, I think the success of the project and uh, of my being will be the day when I really don't worry about the space and don't go there at all. Not many people think that way, you know, they cling on and on and on. No, That's the is, founder's is, trap. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah right, it is yeah. there. Mm -hmm. The founder's trap is there. I mean, everything, whenever I go to buy anything, I say, ah, this will look good in Ranga Shankara. That's the first reaction. But it's okay. It's okay. Very few theatres are built like this in the world. And I happen to be the lucky person who got to do it. So it's okay if all my life goes in just thinking that, oh, that, that peacock feather can go to the theatre. Yes. <laughs> and I've kept it here safe because it is safer here. Right. And it goes on it special goes occasions. Special <laughs> <laughs> so everything yes. in our house, everything in my house is available for Ranga Shankara. So it's been one seamless kind of a journey for both of you. So you were crisscrossing Mumbai and now you're crisscrossing Bangalore. Yeah. So it's, it's, I, I don't think much has changed. Has it for you? I mean, no, not really. Of course. Honestly, I feel like an adolescent. Mm -hmm. Never felt so grand ever so in life <laughs> with, <that>? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with becoming a grandmother. Right. Yeah, but you know, it's like with friends now complaining of knee pain and back pain and this, that and the other. And it's not yet shown up touch wood, but I know it's, it looms large in my mind that soon. So I'm sort of running against time and saying, okay, it's now or never. And uh, that really drives me. But there are dreams and there are things that one has to do, you know, one wants to do, whether it's in education or whether it's in theatre. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what keeps me crisscrossing the city at least. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, role model is really Satyu. M.S. Satyu, right. <laughs> right. He's the quintessential theatre person. My first full-length play was directed by Satyu. Okay. Satyu held hands with me while Ranga Shankara was being built. And even today, Satyu is like past 80. Yeah. Yes. You pick up yeah. the phone and call him and say, Sir, I have a play and I, can you help me with the set? He will call you tomorrow. <laughs> he will, and after you have explained it to him, he'll make a model and he'll give it to you. Amazing. You don't find Amazing. such people yeah, anymore. Yeah. You know? The first thing a professional asks you nowadays is how much are you going to pay me? Pay me. Right. Yeah. This man will never talk about money. You never. won't fi find people like that. You also won't find multilinguals like you. I think there's a monolingual thing that has come in. So people speak either one language or hate another language. No language. Or no people language. speak yeah. no yeah. language. They speak television bad language. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. mumble. People you can't mumble. make out what people are saying right. very See, often. See, people are with mixed marriages. Husband and wife, both of them drop their languages. Right. They're speaking English at home. Right. Yeah. Children have, don't call their parents "amma appa" anymore. They call them "mummy daddy." Right. <laughs> right. And English, bad English, English being yes. spoken. So it's a, it's a. I don't know what the writing on the wall is. Probably you people know better hmm. where the future of the languages is. Hmm. English is such a predator. Right. 
And I'm, yeah. I'm such it's an advocate. Clipped, it's clipped the wings of all regional mm, languages. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, everything is locked in languages. Right. So you your. make it look, both of you make it look very easy. But, you know, I mean, I should intervene and say, there was a period in your life when things were not so easy. You know, I mean, Shankarna suddenly passed away. And Namkade held Tarala. Badukana Bhala Jatandinda Katkondri. Matte. On the Nimage, on vision and Kotkondri, Jatandinda, the Ponsi, 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 Matte no Orbarong Nord Kondri. And there was a hiatus. There was a decade or so where we didn't know where Arundhati Nag was. Adela Hegaitu, I mean, Yen Nimga Shakti Elinda Banto. On the Badukige Itarada on the Bada Dodda on mission and a Kotkondu. Adel Sampuna Torogis Kolua. Jatan din da kat kolwa ondo, shakti elin da bant. Ekare youth, it was unthinkable what happened and sudden. Yeah, unthinkable yes. was there. For yeah. See, she was uh, eleven years old when I met Shankar. Right. I was seventeen, hmm. so she was eleven. Right. She was a little girl. Right. And he has been the largest influence in her life. Right. For me, he was my friend, my companion, my right. lover, my husband. Right. He was not my guru and all that. For her, she was a guru. Right. He was not my guru. He was my companion. So his departure has decimated the two of us in different ways. Different ways Say yes. In similar and different ways. Correct. It is different, but it is the same thing. It's the same thing that mm. you lose your spinal column. You lose Correct. it. So you can buckle. You buckle in right. more than one way. Mm. And uh, I don't think we had a choice. Mm. If you don't get your act together, the world is not going to cry with you or forever. Mm. My mother used to always say in Marathi, Nitya mare tela kond rade. So you don't cry every day. You mm. have to get your act together. And luckily for me, I think my mother was alive for some time. My mother was a nice, soft and strong, strong person. person. And for everyone, the mother is a repl irreplaceable Correct. person. Correct. And we had Kavya. I had Kavya. She was only five years old. Right. It was important for her to have a sane mother and not a mad mother. Right. <laughs> mad I am, <laughs> yes. Right. But not mad in that, right. you know, right. incapable sense. And I must say that uh, the whole world around me held me up really held me up because you don't survive alone in these kind of situations. I was invalid for almost a year. I was nursed back by her, by my family. Family, really. friends, I mean everybody yeah, friends would just come rallied and around us. I was in a wheelchair for almost nine, ten months and uh, friends would come home, sit down over here, read poetry to me, they would read plays. So they kept me alive, they kept me going. And when everything else around me had collapsed, there was no money. Hmm. Shankar didn't have money. He was, right. he was just a 35 and a half year old man. You don't think you're and going to die. A man with great plans and so he invested ah, a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like the floor just yeah. parted, but, but yeah. luckily yeah. family, friends, she was there till I started walking. The child had her. My mother was there. So it, my family really was really? my family and my theatre family. So it was, so it was really these these two right. families. Right. And the first thing we did for normalcy was to do a play. Oh, that's so nice to do that. The last conversation I had with Shankar before we left home mm. on that day was.